Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to my channel, Wisconsin Hugs. My name is Tony Grillo, and uh, welcome to Star Trek Football Talk. Uh, this is a newly developed skit that I have created, uh, and uh, I'm not sure how far I'm going to take it, or if anybody likes it but I'm going to see what I can do with it uh, for a while. <laughs> or not. I don't know. We'll find out. But this is uh, where we analyze Star Trek as if it was a football game. And uh, uh, it takes two things I love very much, Star Trek and football, and then combine them together. Uh it takes two things that are mostly enjoyed by two groups of people that exist very much on opposite sides of the spectrum. We have your Star Trek fans, as you can see here. at a convention in Las Vegas. And then we take a look at football fans. Well, okay, this is a Darth Raider, a Darth Vader Raider right here. Uh, okay, maybe that's not so different than Star Trek. Let's look at another image. Oh, yeah, okay, here we go. We got a a Green Bay Packer Darth Vader and a Green Bay Packer uh, clone. Okay, well, let's maybe take one more stab at it, see the difference between Star Trek fans and um, NFL football fans. Uh, oh yeah, okay, well, okay, we have a, a Buffalo Bills Darth Vader. Okay, so maybe the fans uh, aren't so different after all. Well, maybe my idea of combining Star Trek with the NFL wasn't so original after all. I did find this uh, article that was actually written uh, in a NFL-backed uh, 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 story here. Um, uh, apparently this Alex uh, Jelhar had come up with some ideas about uh, uh, Star Trek. Trek the football generation and so he had uh, Peyton Manning as Spock uh, you know Spock is the calm, collected, highly logical first officer of the Enterprise who uses intelligence to guide the Enterprise safety. Manning uh, has arguably the best football mind in the NFL. And then uh, they put uh, Sulu, they combine him with Patrick Peterson. Apparently, uh, Sulu is a man of many talents and interests, uh, interests in addition to his duties uh, to serving on the Enterprise. And Peterson is arguably the most versatile player in the NFL. Last season, he dominated as a cornerback and was a dangerous return man, and even caught passes for the offense. So, uh, they put uh, Chekhov uh, with Andrew Luck. You know, Chekhov is the whiz kid navigator, uh, and so who better to play his NFL counterpart than Andrew Luck, who is a whiz kid that's navigating the future of the Colts. And then they put uh, Uhura uh, as uh, Amy Trask. And like it or not, uh, it is a boys club, but that didn't prevent Amy Trask from rising through the ranks of the Oakland Raiders franchise all the way CEO, um, a position she recently uh, slapped down from. Trask's ability to communicate allowed her to excel at her job for more than a decade. 
just like Uhura, was uh, very talented as a communications officer and communicating for the ship. Um, they put uh, Bones, McCoy, uh, let's see, they combined him with Aaron Rodgers. I, I don't know where they get that from, but Bones is a tough one to figure out, but Aaron Rodgers fits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's why. I guess, you know, Bones is, uh, you know, the old man on the crew. And so it just makes sense to make Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, the, the old man on the Enterprise. Uh, you know, let's see what they had to say here. Uh, not only does he have a loose connection to uh, this list, Captain Kirk, um, but they're both from California. Bones is a humanitarian at heart as is Rogers, although he doesn't publicize it a lot. Uh, Rogers is very active with the MACC Fund in uh, Wisconsin, that's Midwest Athletes Against Child Cancer, and so, and plus, uh, Rogers sort of looks like uh, Carl Urban. Yeah, okay, maybe. Let's see, who did they put as uh, a mysterious villain, Wes Walker? Uh, all right. That must have been uh, the con in one of the movies. Uh, well, Savvy fans of the series can already guess who the villain is. Yep, Khan. So they're making Wes Walker Khan. Um, however, we just gleaned from the trailers that this DVC good-looking fellow was one of the Federation's top agents before turning against them. And no one was more of a top agent uh, for their team that jumped ship than Wes Walker. Uh, granted, in the instance... Uh, if the Patriots are the Federation, they turn their back on Walker, on Welker first. I'm sorry. And, uh, okay. Christopher Pike, uh, Bill Belichick. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Christopher, uh, Bill Belichick being Christopher Pike. Uh, if you've seen J.J. Abrams, the first Star Trek film, we know Pike was a guy who first believed in young Kirk and urged him to join Starfleet. Uh, yeah, okay. And then, oh, okay, he's got Tom Brady as Captain Kirk. Yeah, that makes sense. That made that totally makes sense. Tom Brady is the NFL's Kirk. Uh, I see more of Kirk in the young Tom Brady, but it still works today. You remember the good-looking, cocky kid out of Michigan who told Robert Kraft, I'm the best decision this organization has ever made. Kirk has the same swagger and bravado. Both Kirk and Brady can walk the walk and talk the talk. Kirk doesn't believe in no-win scenarios, and neither does Brady, as he captained the Patriots to three Super Bowls in four years. Lastly, Brady and Belichick were Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine in Adam Rank's Star Wars NFL Corrections. So, connections. So, it's only right to balance out the NFL nerd. Okay, and let's see who they have at number nine. The red shirt. The red shirts. The Cardinal QBs. Yeah, here we go. Uh, all the quarterback uh, of the Cardinals. Okay, are the red shirts. And we all know what happens to the red shirts. Uh, um, for those of you who don't know, the red shirts is the affectionate moniker of the poor Enterprise crew member who had joined Kirk, Spock, and Bones when they ventured off in a mission but never returned. You know, so J.J. Abrams even gave a subtle nod to this uh, in his film. The guy that uh, dies in the base jumping scene, he was wearing a red suit. So... Within in that mind, the red shirts of the NFL would have to be the Cardinals quarterbacks from 2012. They, those poor saps trotted out one after another on hopeless missions to lead the Cardinals to victory only to be squashed by defenseman Lyman again and again and never to return to the starting lineup. Good luck to 2013 Carson Palmer. And here is the quarterback of the next generation football team, John Luke Picard. You can see him uh, training really hard. He's getting really ready for the brand new season with Team Enterprise. And here's a picture 
of him in his Seattle Seahawks jersey. He is definitely a football fan, and he's standing next to uh, his other buddy, uh, Ian McLennan, who they starred together in the Marvel movie, uh, The X-Men. And he's in a Broncos jersey, but never mind that they're holding the wrong ball. And so Team Enterprise is uh, playing their very first game on the road. And they are heading to uh, Far Point Stadium to take on a new division rival known as the Bandy, which are led by a guy with the best Star Trek football name ever. His name is Grop Burzone. I'm sorry, Gropper Zorn. Gropper Zorn is his name. And as the game is being played, uh, they don't even have their full team there yet. Uh, but uh, the offense is suddenly stopped by the mighty defense of another team that has come onto the field. A team that is very good. Um, they are called the Q Team. And uh, they make it very easy for sports announcers uh, to call games because not only is the team called Q, but everybody that plays on that team has the name Q. So immediately, Q starts trash talking Picard. And he says, Light travels faster than sound, which is why you seem to bright until you spoke. To which Picard replies, Your kid is so annoying, he makes his Happy Meal cry. Well then Q retorts, your ass must get jealous of all the shit that comes out of your mouth. Well Picard can't let that one rest, so he replies, it's so nice when toxic people stop talking to you. It's like the trash took itself out. Q replies, I'll never forget the first time we met, but I'll keep trying. And Picard answers back, someday you'll go far, I hope you stay there. Q replies, Rose are red, violets are blue. I've got five fingers. The middle one is for you. While Q keeps trash talking, Picard is already coming up with the next play. Q says, A Frenchman has never played in the NFL. You don't even call the sport you like by the right name. It's called soccer. John Luke replies, well, I'm the first Frenchman to be in the NFL, and I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Then John L Luke Picard quickly lines his team up and does a quick snap without even a count and takes off with the ball at warp 9.5 as fast as he can. Q is caught by surprise but he gives chase and is just about to catch up when Picard suddenly splits the Enterprise in two. It's a very dangerous maneuver detaching the saucer section, especially at warp 9.5, but they brilliantly execute the play. And Q doesn't know who has the ball. And Picard scores the game-winning 
TD. And he has defeated the Q team in his very first NFL football game. And everybody celebrates. The fans of Team Enterprise are ecstatic that Picard has won the day and when the team gets back home they celebrate like he just won the Super Bowl. They even give him Captain Picard Day. And Captain Picard basks for just a moment and enjoys what they have accomplished. He is the first Frenchman to win a football game in the NFL. Now on to our next game. Captain Picard yells to his celebrating teammates. Engage! Engage! 